Welcome to the Scaling Japan Podcast, a podcast about how to grow your business from one hundred thousand dollars and beyond. And beyond in the land of the rising sun. Welcome to the Scaling Japan Podcast. I'm your host Tyson Batino, and today we have Miho Tanaka on the show. And Miho is the founder of Startup Work Incorporated. And she's also supporting the Shibuya Startup Support Program as the Startup Visa Lead. I'm so glad to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Taisa, for having me today. Yeah, looking forward to yeah see all of the audience. Yeah, this is going to be a, a real action-packed episode, and Miho is going to tell us a lot about what government financial support there is for Bitso for businesses. And、uh, not only financial support, but anything the government is doing to help businesses in Japan grow. And so, we're going to get hear a lot of things. A lot of this is going to be new for me too. So I'm really excited for it today. And Miho, could you give a quick introduction to yourself? Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Taisan. So currently, I am working as a startup visa lead in Shibuya Startup Support. And also, like I am guiding them through all the incorporation process in Japan under a startup welcome service. And yeah, I started this startup visa lead job、uh, last year when Shibuya officially started the startup visa schema with like one year visa program under the city. And I've been leading the startup visa since then. And yeah, before I joined Shibuya's this project, I was、uh, working with several startups, and also like I was originally working with Tokyo Metropolitan Government under TOSBEC. The official name is Tokyo One Stop Business Establishment Center, which is the center that provides all the paperwork support to start a company in Tokyo. And I was organizing hundred over hundred events、uh, during the while I was working for TOSBEC. So pre-COVID, right? <laughs>、mm-hmm, pre-COVID, yes. <laughs> gotcha. Hundred events. Wow, that's a lot. And Miho Tanaka is, I'll say, probably in the startup community in Tokyo. She's probably one of the most well-known people. So when I mention her name, people are like, "Oh yeah, I know Miho." So, and、uh, <laughs> if you don't know Miho, now is your chance. <laughs> Catch me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so like. So I guess the first topic I really wanted to dive in today, and it's like,、uh, so when you scale your company, let's say you can kind of let's say if you can generate revenue through sales or marketing, you can use that money to reinvest in your company. But sometimes some founders they may have a business that might be more investment intensive, or they need a bit of a kickstart at the start to grow their business and. If you can't just rely on marketing and sales, one of the other options is banks, but also the government as well. And I know that the amount of things that the government is offering these days is increasing. So I'm really, really curious to see what's going on these days for the government financial support for business. So please shed some light on the topic, please, Miho. Okay, so I think、uh, COVID changes. Most of the government financing strategies. So especially like after COVID, governmental institutions started to provide a lot of loan program for、uh, mainly small and medium enterprises. We just call it SMEs. So before that, I think most of the government are trying to provide a lot of subsidy and grants. But since like they shifted over their focus to mainly loan, so I think、uh, the budget size is changing. And another thing. That I see is that I think most of the governments are trying to support startup nowadays. Maybe like starting a few years back, and at the time, I don't think many government were focusing on like investment side. But now,、uh, with the growth of、uh, VC ecosystem, investors network, government is also pushing to launch a lot of funds. So, like recently, I see like Tokyo government just launched a huge fund on like hundred million dollars、uh, for、oh, wow. fintech and yeah, green businesses. And also another famous one is like called Nedo. They're like mainly focusing on R and D、uh, projects. 
And they also decided to create a $20 billion fund called Green Innovation Fund. Oh, so, wow. And actually, I want to ask you, so what is a green business? Other than, I, I'm pretty sure it's not cash. <laughs> <laughs> green business, yeah. I would say that business uh, are focusing on like sustainability field that attracts mainly like ESG investment. So I think like in Europe, it's very common to see a lot of businesses targeting sustainability field. But in Japan, I think it's still very like new. So I think the government people are also like trying to like accelerate the ESG investment movement nowadays. Awesome. And some of my audience may not be familiar with it, but what does ESG stand for? Yeah. Environment, uh, societal and governance. Awesome. And yeah, so that's interesting that the government is putting, I guess, $100 million into or from the Tokyo government for the fintech mm -hmm. and financial technology and green businesses. And I think $20 billion, wow, for the Nido Green Innovation Fund. That's some big money. And I want to also confirm. So you mentioned that in the past, there might have been a lot more grants and subsidies in general, but they're shifting more towards loans recently. Is that correct? Yes, loan plus equity-based funding, I would say. So like especially METI, Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, they're focusing on JKS, like equity-based funding structure. That's very similar to SAFE in the States. So they oh, just, gosh. yeah, they published a like, paper all about equity, I mean, like finance. You mean like a SAFE agreement? Yeah, that's close. Oh, I yes. see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But JKS is the, I would say, the Japanese version of KISS. And uh, yeah, I think you also mentioned like there's some, I would say, maybe they might not be as innovative but i think you mentioned there's like some grants or loans available maybe for some smaller businesses but could you let us know about what's available for that okay of course so i would say there are mainly three grants and loans that entrepreneurs can target and the first one is that what tokyo government provides it's a three million japanese yen grants for business owners operating business for less than five years so one thing that we have to know when we apply for subsidy or grants is the expenditure that we can cover with the subsidy grants are very limited. So for example, like if we want to use the subsidy for advertisement, that's only for advertisement, for example. But this 3 million Japanese yen grants that I'm talking about on the Tokyo government is called Sogyo Josei Jigyo. And this Specific grants covers a lot of expenditures, so including advertisement, rent, and even like personal cost. So like when we hire a new like person, we have to pay for their salary and we can even cover their salary. So it's very easy to use these grants. So this is the first grants that I want to talk about. Uh, interesting. And I think it's available for business owners operating for less than five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there any other requirements or, I guess, types of companies they like to support with this grant? Yeah. <laughs> so we have to be careful that if a person is operating a business as a solo for over 10 years, for example, then they are not applicable to apply for this program. But I think uh, most of the founders around me, they are just like starting their business. So I think most of them are applicable. And one thing to also be careful is that it's a bit difficult to pivot if we get the subsidy because we have to send a report to government how we spend the money and like oh how wow so yeah <laughs> so i guess you don't want to be let's say seen as a scammer <laughs> yeah so we have to get the same plan as we originally planned yeah so we pivoted from a tech company to an events company <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, for the listeners, we are going to provide some links to this Tokyo Metropolitan Grant and some of the other grants, loans, and funds that Miho is mentioning. But uh, Miho told me something really interesting. And she mentioned that a lot of things are probably going to change in April. So we are recording this at the end of January 2022. But April 2022, things, things are going to change. Uh, why are things changing in April? 
So like since Japanese government usually starts all the years and including all the companies, there is the new physical year from April. And they're basically working under a specific budget size for a fiscal year. So all the projects will end in the end of、uh, March. And then they completely start a new project. And thinking of subsidy, their application form changes every single year. So it's hard to guess <laughs> <laughs> what's coming up. But I am trying to share most of the subsidies and grants and loan programs that I always see. I'm like, these programs are stably like, operated under the government. So I think you can most likely target these、uh, subsidies that we are discussing in this show.、Um, thanks so much. And I think also some a lot of the pages are in Japanese. So I highly recommend you use the Google Chrome. Translate extension or get a Japanese friend. <laughs> I think next you mentioned, I think, about JFC loans.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, so JFC is the abbreviation of Japan Finance Corporation, which is the biggest public、uh, financial institution in Japan. And JFC is very、uh, kind to founders, whereas most of the banks want to usually work with established, small, medium sized high enterprises. So, JFC offers a loan program for specifically for founders to accelerate entrepreneurship in Japan. And I would say that it depending on like how much cash we have in our bank account, but they are providing from like a few million yen loan to like, let's say like for the first time users about like 30 million Japanese yen. And、oh, wow. yeah. So, yeah, this is a great one to target for founders. And I also found that、uh, Tokyo government is launching a new loan scheme for, especially for international founders. So, their schema is based on like 15 million Japanese yen loan. And the repayment period is 10 years, and grace period can be up to three years. And the interest rate is 2.7%. So, there are some taking out a loan is even very hard for Japanese founders, like including me. So, like having that new schema specifically for international founders can show like how government is trying to support international founders. Yeah, no, that's really generous then, having that three year grace period.、Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I guess their private target is probably someone. Who was he? Don't have a big team, but just probably themselves, maybe two co founders <laughs> willing to make less money to get the business running.、Uh -huh. I, yeah, I see him so too. <laughs> yeah, even myself too. Like, I would be totally afraid to, or I guess I would be afraid to take a loan as well. Even、mm -hmm. though now I think it depends. But if you choose the right business model, maybe、uh, I would be fine with it, taking a loan. But、mm -hmm. to do something kind of super. On something unproven, yeah, that would be quite scary.、Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah, it's hard for a startup to see like what's coming up in the next few years. So, totally agree. Cool. Like what you're listening to and ready to scale your company? Let Tyson coach you and your team to make the jump. You can find more information about our coaching and advisory services at www.scalingyourcompany.com. Now, back to our podcast. And yeah, thanks for sharing about that. And also, I want to dive into I know it's not in the realm of grant subsidies and loans, but As you mentioned in the beginning, like governments are providing more support. And、uh, I heard you can get some free office space, but is that true? So it's hard to find, especially to find an office space where we can even register a company that doesn't cost any money for us. But I just found, especially for international companies, Jetro is providing office space under IBSC. And this is In Tokyo, it's located in Akasaka. And for companies coming from abroad, I think they're offering、uh, free spaces for up to 50 business days. I think you should confirm with IBSC, but、um, there is a space. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so like for foreign corporations, it's a big plus. And also, It's not completely free, but I think、uh, some local governments in like Kansai area or Fukuoka 
they are also providing some like office subsidy support for founders. So that's something that founders can take advantage of as well. Gotcha. And if anyone has、uh, information on this, please just post it on the LinkedIn Scaling Japan podcast page, and、mm -hmm. uh, we'll try to keep an up to date record of this. Yes. And next, yeah, I think they also offer some preferential tax treatment too, right? Yes. So there, are, I would say mainly two tax treatment that founders can take advantage of. One is angel tax relief. So when angel investors、uh, invest to a like startup, then the angel investors can get tax benefit. So it's gonna be easier for the investor side to actually invest to the new startups. And usually, this tax relief、uh, works for convertible notes. So, unfortunately, like it's not for JKs from founder side. JKs is like、uh, thinking of like a financial terms. It's advantageous for founders to actually use JKs. But angel tax relief is until now,、uh, it's only available for the investment under convertible notes. Another thing is、uh, called open innovation tax incentive. This is basically for the investment coming from like corporate. So I would say most of the cases are like relating to CVC. This tax incentive is for hundred million Japanese yen investment with five years of shareholding rights from corporate side. So yeah, the fund check size is bigger, much bigger than angel tax relief. But this is something. That you can use if your startup is targeting like CVC investment. Ah,、uh, what is CVC? CVC is corporate venture capital. So it's usually founded under like corporate. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> For corporates that have too much money and they need somewhere to put their money. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> <laughs> and、uh, for those interested in angel investments, if you our first episode with、uh, Yuki Shiraito, he talks、uh, about his angel investment syndicate. Cool. Yeah. No, that's really awesome that the government is providing some tax incentives to mostly high net worth individuals and corporations for putting money back into the ecosphere. Exactly. Yeah, government is like trying to support entrepreneurs in Japan. Yeah, yeah.、No. I've attended some, and I think the next one is. I know some government units are providing like free advice and seminars, and I've attended quite a few from Toastic, just on like the tax, like what you need to be aware of taxes and how to start a company in Japan legally. But、uh, yeah, if you could tell us more about the free services and seminars available. Yeah. So right now, since I'm working with Shibuya City, I would like to say that a startup welcome service that we are operating is organizing some events with free of charge, and our work is like mainly guiding them through the entire incorporation service, ah,、uh, incorporation process. So yeah, please feel free to reach out to us.、Uh, we can provide a, a like thirty minutes free consultation to service, and also as I mentioned, a、uh, tospec. Under Tokyo government, they always、uh, provide a free support for like free consultations for founders who needs to go through all the incorporation process, including articles of incorporation, company registration, and like tax and social insurance and、uh, sometimes immigration. So that's a good place to also ask for some help. And the last thing I want to mention is called Startup Hub Tokyo. It's located in Marunouchi area. And this center also supports、uh, founders to go through all the、um, like business planning process. And Startup Hub Tokyo only provides consultation in Japanese, I think. So yeah, please, if you're like going and if you don't speak Japanese, then please bring a Japanese friend or a Japanese translator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so actually, I have a question for you. So I started my own business in October. Doing a、uh, business coaching and advising for business owners, and I'm actually after three four months, I've reached. I've already at this pace. I'm going to cross the ten million yen mark. Wow! Even if I don't grow my company anymore, and、uh, so I'm reached that point where I might have to start paying sales tax. So it might be advantageous for me to incorporate as a company instead of being a sole proprietor. 
-hmm. And which of these three should I reach out to to discuss the topic of should I incorporate or remain as a sole proprietor? (sighs) It's a tax accountant's expertise. So, yeah. I probably just should probably just hire an accountant, right? (laughs) That's the easiest, I think. Yeah. Um, Because if you really want to need a detailed answer, I think tax accountant sites want to see all the financial like seats, right? To make sure everything. Thanks for the advice. I wasn't expecting my company to grow this quickly. Wow. That's a good thing. (laughs) Yeah. So cool. (laughs) Thanks for the feedback there. Also, like, yeah, I know, like, a uh, shout out to Jason Ball and uh, Miho put this on the notes, but uh, for they have on Clubhouse every Mondays at 9 p.m. And I think maybe Monday afternoon, maybe 12 p.m. Uh, we'll put that the accurate times of the notes, but uh, they do a chat where there's some really good founders. Uh, I think Natalie, I think Ilya and the dude who made Money Tree. Like, oh, uh, Paul, yeah. Forgive me, Paul. <laughs> I know your voice, but I don't know your name. But uh, yeah, it's a really excellent, I would say show, but it's kind of like a live chat and you can ask questions to really, really solid founders. Yeah, I am amazed every single time, like how much information they are sharing based on their practical experience. And so I appreciate like how much time they are sparing every single week. And yeah, so that's the, I think that one of the best places to actually learn about how to start a startup in Japan for international founders. And also like on Monday, organize everything in English. So yeah, please feel free to hop in. <laughs> and yeah, as someone who's created, my first company is, also it's a medium-sized company or it's getting to near medium-sized company. So like 200 employees. and. uh those hosts, I also think they are legitimate. So they're definitely worth your time to check out as someone who's created a company with more than 200 employees. And uh, yeah, I guess, is there any other types of support from the government? Yes. So recently, I see there are so many acceleration programs that local governments are organizing. But at the same time, like the always the number of the participants are really uh, limited. And it's sometimes very hard for founders who want to start a business or a startup in Japan to actually reach out and get the support. So I'm actually thinking to create an incubation program under my company called Seeds for entrepreneurs, founders, also startups to actually learn how to start a startup in Japan. So yeah, by the time we publish this show, we are ready to announce it. So yeah, we need to test it. And like, yeah, just launch it first to see uh, what kind of support we can actually build from there. So yeah, but it's going to be the incubation program, open incubation program for all the international founders who want to come to Japan and start a business. Awesome. So we're going to definitely have to uh, link to that in the show notes. Thank you. (laughs) That is an awesome surprise. No, that was really useful. And actually, I think there's something that probably the listeners are curious about, but what types of industries do you think the government is looking to support these days? I think uh, deep tech, of course. Medi is targeting even Tokyo. Universities are targeting a lot, <laughs> like targeting and like they created new tech. And especially Shibuya is the center for tech startups. So of course, we also target AI. But I think it also depending on the region. So I think if it's in Hokkaido, like they have huge land. So um, their focus is like agri-tech, space tech. If it's Tsukuba, maybe robotics. So I think different region has different priorities for the industries. But in Tokyo, I would say like deep tech, yeah, industry in general. I uh, got you. Financial technology as well, right? Yeah, exactly. So especially Tokyo government's focus is always uh, fintech. So I think uh, for fintech founders, I think Tokyo government can provide a lot of support. Is that because they want to make Tokyo the financial hub of Asia? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they want to compete with, I think, Singapore, Hong Kong, different kinds of like areas in Asia. So yes. 
Awesome. So, yeah, thank you so much for sharing such awesome information. And where can people find you? Uh, LinkedIn. I'm always on LinkedIn. So, yeah, please reach me out there. Yeah. Awesome. And we'll have a link to your LinkedIn profile. So it's been awesome to have you on the podcast. And I think we'll probably have to have you again after you launch your incubator program mm -hmm. and maybe around July because the government system will change and we'll need an update on that. <laughs> but uh, I will tell the audience on LinkedIn that if you want government money, you need to act now. Listen to this podcast in February. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tyson. Yeah, I um, definitely update you about the progress. Yeah. Hey, take care, Miho. Thank you so much, Tyson. And as mentioned, if you are a business owner who is generating over 100,000 US revenue a year and up to multi million, and up to, I would say, three to five million annual revenue, I would highly recommend my coaching and advisory services to help you scale your marketing, operations, recruiting, and overall management of your team. Thank you for listening, and I hope this has been a big help. And you can find more podcasts at scalingyourcompany.com forward slash podcasts. Take it easy.